My name is Chris. Welcome to this particular show. The beat goes on. It's already time to take a look at the week nine waiver wire preliminarily. So let's do this. As always, we start each week talking about waiver ads in shallower leagues where there are a lot of players on waivers. The ownership percentages you'll see here are in Yahoo leagues. The early news from the NFL trade deadline is that Kenyon Drake, number three here, is headed to the Cardinals. And I'm not sure I have that much hope for his season-long value, because I think David Johnson eventually gets healthy. For a one-week emergency ad in a shallow league, I don't hate Kenyon Drake. Chase Edmonds is hurt. DJ won't play. You're taking a risk. Assuming that the Cardinals are going to throw Drake out there, sight unseen, Thursday night against the 49ers. This is a pure break glass emergency stuff, but it could work. I like adding Jamal Williams. He's playable in an awful lot of leagues. Adrian Peterson, I mean, it's another bad matchup against the Bills Sunday and then a bye week. But then again, the Bills just gave up a lot of rushing yards to the Eagles, and Washington is definitely committed to the run. I recommended Kenny Stills hard last week. It didn't happen for him. Sometimes feast or famine players go on a hunger strike. Uh, Philip Dorsett, tough to trust him, but he does seem to me like the last remaining speed threat in the Patriots receiving core. Okay, and now for the more standard leagues. And the result of the Kenyon Drake trade is that Mark Walton sure looks like the lead back in Miami. I will look at more of his film in a moment. The awkward thing about this list is, so A, Ty Johnson was at the top of everyone's list last week, and for one game anyway, blowing a big chunk of your fab money on him turns out not to have been very profitable. But also B, the top two names on the list we're showing you here are playing Monday night. So this is a preliminary list. If you're seeing this Tuesday morning, you know more about what happened with those guys than I do right now. I've got a couple of tight ends on here, one of whom I will examine on film. And then a weekly reminder that Alexander Madison of the Vikings should be owned in every single league. If Dalvin Cook gets hurt, Madison could verge on being an RB1. Now, of course, if we get more trade news, our list here could be disrupted. So let's be flexible as the NFL trade deadline approaches. I could easily have Rashad Penny on this list. Pretty high if he gets dealt. Melvin Gordon can get dealt. No, you don't know what will happen to the market then. O.J. Howard, A.J. Green, Tyler Eifert. Stay tuned. You know if and when such deals happen. We will talk about them here, and I will talk about them on my podcast, which you can find at harrisfootball.com. Okay, stand by. In a minute, we will watch some game film. I love Audible. It's the world's largest selection of audio entertainment. They've got tons of Audible originals. They also have so many audio books. If you've never tried Audible, it's a wonderful time to start. They've got four of my novels on Audible. I read them out loud. One of them's even about football. So you can get a 30-day trial right now. And in that trial, you can choose two Audible originals and one audio book for free. And if you choose one of my books... Well, that counts. You will be a person of the book for free. That gets you admission into our private Facebook group where I do live chats and answer your questions every Sunday. So to get that free 30-day Audible trial, click the link or go to audible.com slash Harris Tube or text Harris Tube to 500500 and you will get that 30-day trial. Go listen. Be a person of the book for free. Okay, let's watch some Mark Walton film since the last time we talked about him on the channel. A 14-yard gain here. This is what we call a congratulations run, as in congratulations, you didn't fall down. From the end zone angle, you can see a hole wider than a truck. Good old Walton, he identifies it. That's good, but uh, most backs are going to identify a hole that big. You see some nice acceleration to beat the traffic and get loose. Once again, remember, we are recording this before Monday Night Football. I don't have that film for you here. This one, also week six against Washington, a pure power play with a pulling guard and tight end. It's a nice hole. Miami's O-line, not totally incompetent. Once again, from the end zone, you can see two guys pulling, a couple of seals, and what Walton does well is not fall down. You know, he, he finds the hole. He is quick. You can see he can get to the hole when he sees it. Remember Chase Edmonds having his crazy touchdown day a couple weeks ago? This is what that looked like. 
This one against Buffalo Week 7 is similar. I actually like it better. It goes for 19, and Walton shows some good acceleration to almost get away from Micah Hyde. But if we once again go back and watch the end zone angle, you can see that Walton is tempted to go outside to the left. But he puts his left foot down hard because he sees a Bills defender playing outside technique. So he decides, all right, well, I'm not going to make it out there. So he cuts it back, and he finds a good-sized hole. Not sure that hole was there before he cut, but it is a big hole that Walton kind of helped find by being decisive rather than just run straight until someone knocks him down. If the Dolphins block up a zone run for him... Walton has it in him to cut once and accelerate and go pretty hard. This is a moderately successful play. He's got quickness. He's got foot speed. A small guy, not going to punish anyone in the hole. This little misdirection screen, you know, this is James White stuff. And we love White for it, but that's because he's associated with Tom Brady. You don't have to do anything special as a runner when there's no traffic around you. So Walton just sort of weaves and gets some yards here. This screen maybe better illustrates the burst he's got. I like it because, well, if we look at a replay, once he makes the catch, he sees three defenders to his right, to the outside. So he will use their momentum against them and kind of run it up in, not really a cut, more an acceleration, and he winds up making his own space to run. But listen, in the end, we are talking 5'10 and 200. We are talking Gio Bernard, Chase Edmonds, Duke Johnson, close in situations. You know, you better make him a hole because he's probably not going to be able to barrel over guys to get into the end zone. Fantasy football is a dance of opportunity and ability. There are people out there who will say, I don't care if he's good. I just care if he gets touches. On this channel, we think that's silly. We need them to be good, too or the touches will go away. But when we're talking waivers, opportunity is important. Again, I will reconvene on the podcast on Tuesday to talk more about Walton's stock after the Monday game. He's a complimentary back, but he may be given a more than complimentary role. He's okay, and that could make him flexible even on the Dolphins in a pinch. Now, am I excited about adding Dallas Goddard? Am I excited about chasing a touchdown from each of the past two weeks when, for instance, against Buffalo Sunday, Goddard had three catches for 22 yards? Am I excited? Heck no. There's an argument that someone like Darren Fells might be a better try in the dark. But I have had Goddard on my waiver ad list on the podcast, on this show, for a few weeks now. I thought this would be a good opportunity to show you why. Make no mistake, Zach Ertz is the Eagles' number one tight end. He's not producing like it, and that's very frustrating. He's actually probably a pretty good buy-low candidate right now himself, to be honest. He's the one running the greatest number of routes. But in this past four-game span, Ertz has 25 targets and Goddard has 20. There's a clear shift toward two tight end sets, and there is a clear drain on the massive target share Ertz got last season. And, given what Goddard is, it's easy to understand why. This play, Goddard is lined up slot right at the snap. I mean, no matter what, Wentz knows that he has Goddard matched up against a linebacker. So, it's his job, as he drops back, to manipulate the deep safety. I think that's Jeff Heath with his eyes. He keeps him honest in the deep middle, and now it's Goddard against Leighton Vander Esch, number 55, who we know has a reputation, runs really well, and Goddard outruns him, runs by him, a perfect throw. He reaches up. That is a Kelsey-like play. That is a hard-to-stop play. This play from September won't wind up covering Goddard in glory because it's a drop, but it'll again show the Kelsey-like upside that he has. Once again, match on a linebacker, Christian Jones, and once again, a single high safety who won't be able to get over. This is there for Goddard a lot, and he does drop this one, and it's not good. But the guy runs routes like a wideout, like a deer, at 6'5", 256. I've shown this play on the channel before. I love it. It's from last season. If you told me Travis Kelsey was momentarily in an Eagle uniform, I'd believe it. Goddard from the inline on the right side. He cuts across. He turns the route up. He outruns Tayshawn Gibson. He's faster than Gibson. And then after the catch, just ho-hum, decides to control his body, put his foot in the ground, and cut. 
you know, he's 250 whatever pounds. Derrick Henry dreams of agility like this. Ertz himself is a terrific player, less a freak athlete, more a fantastic, amazing body control route runner, a technician. Certainly, he's the better bet going forward. Starting any NFL team's second tight end, especially when Deshaun Jackson has a chance to return soon, (laughs) feels like a sucker bet. Maybe this segment can just stand in for me being excited about Goddard's dynasty stock. I think eventually he's going to be a star And he is very clearly a drain on Ertz. If you're real desperate at tight end, you can take a look at Goddard Week 9 against the Bears. Thanks so much for watching. Please, please, please smash that like button. Write a comment. Tell us who else you'd like to see us review film on. And of course, best of all, please subscribe to our channel and then click that little bell above the subscribe button and you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. 